there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to paint dewdrops. Um, I've got a card here with a plumeria flower that I painted um, different little dewdrops on the petals. And um, it looks complicated, but it's really quite easy. So I'm just going to get this scrap of watercolor paper here, and you'll see a couple different examples of dewdrops. Here I have a dewdrop as it would appear on a leaf, kind of flat on a leaf. Here I have a dewdrop as it would appear kind of dripping down a petal, hence the teardrop shape. And up here I just have kind of another flat um, dew drop as it would appear on a petal. So over on this side of the paper I have just a couple swashes of color just so I can show you this technique. You're going to need a pencil and um, we're going to draw two basic teardrop shape, uh, two basic dew drop shapes. Um, you have, you can either do a circle as if you were kind of looking straight down on it. You can do an oval so you kind of like um, looking sideways over it, or the uh, the teardrop shape as if it's on the side of a petal with all the weight of the water being being pulled down. And um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer on this so I can show you how to paint these. Here we go, that's a good, uh, good close up. The first thing you want to do is actually scrub out some of the color inside of that. And since we're using watercolors, it's pretty easy to remove some of that color. I've got a uh, stiff bristle brush here. This is just a stencil brush. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove color. So let's pretend the light is coming from above. We're going to remove color actually in the bottom part of each of the drops. So you do that by scrubbing it a little bit and then blotting it. Try not to scrub it so much that you um, damage a paper. I think I overdid it on that one a little bit. I'm just going to scrub and blot. Scrub and blot. Okay, because when you're looking at a dew drop, you can see over here, it's actually lighter on the bottom of the drop than it is on the top, because the light's coming down, giving you the high highlight on the top, but the light's getting trapped in the bottom, kind of like a prism. Take a little bit more out of there. This brush might actually be a little too rough for that. Let me just go in with one of my softer brushes. It's not a great idea to scrub with your painting brushes, but I'm just going to kind of push Gent very gently with this. I'm just wetting the paper and kind of trying to push the pigment out of the way into the edge. So I usually use like my uh, older watercolor. I'm older acrylic brushes for that. But just getting the paper wet and pressing straight down does take quite a bit of the pigment out. Okay, now what we have is uh, we have to do the shadow underneath the drop. So if our light's coming from above or from the side, our shadow is going to be underneath. So what I'm going to do is use a darker color of the petal, and I'm going to load it up on one corner of my brush. So if I was just to stroke it across, I'd have more color on one side than the other. I'm going to want that a little bit darker, darker. so I'm going to add a little green to that, um, to that pink color because green's the opposite and I've probably used my sap green somewhere else. So that'll give me a nice natural dark. Or if that looks too uh, muddy, I can add a, just a little bit of blue to clean it up. So I end up with like kind of a gray purple. Now when I, I dip my brush and I just kind of squeeze it to take the extra water out, then I'm loading up just the corner of my brush and I'm gonna side load across. And I'm gonna finish that stroke up like that because I want to have it nice and soft. I'm going to do that under each one of these. I'm going to rinse and reload because I'm out of paint. Do that third one. And you do this the same way on the uh, on the green except you just use whatever uh, color would be your natural shadow for the green. Now sometimes you end up with a little bit of a bright spot in the shadow because um, because of the way the light's hitting it, it's nice and bright, so you're getting a really bright spot. You can just add a little drop. Probably do that with our round brush. Where'd my round brush go? Hmm, oh, there it is. It's a clear handle, almost invisible. Um, add a, you can add a watery drop of yellow in the middle of that if you want. And it, as it dries, it will kind of push some of the pigment out. It'll just give you a little bit of a lighter, um, a lighter look. You can even take a little Q-tip, which would be a lot easier, but I don't have one right handy, and you could actually lift out a little sparkle there. 
while you're at it. And that got a little out of hand over there. I'm going to have to re repaint that one. I'm going to show you how to enhance these with colored pencils too when we're done. Because sometimes you just want to have it a little bit more defined. It's going to go back under there. Now you also need to add a shadow on the inside of your drop too. I'm going to make mine a little bit more um, pinky. Oops, I don't have enough paint on there. Because the top of your of your um, dewdrop is going to be darker. Just the way it reflects the light. If, you're, if your paint is traveling across your brush too much, you might just need to uh, dry it off a little bit more. If your brush is too wet, your uh, paint might travel too far on you. I need to go in and add a little bit more dark in those. It's not nearly dark enough. Because we need to make sure we have enough contrast. And if I have a sharp area like that, I'll just go in with a damp brush and just soften it. Just like that. And if it gets into the area I want it to be light, I can just blot it. All right, so now that has to dry. And um, I'm going to dry it with my heat gun and show you how to do the bright highlights. So I'll be back in just one second. To add the highlight on the top, all I do is take an X-Acto knife and I just scrape it away. So that way we didn't have to, we didn't have to uh, keep any of those place is white with masking fluid or anything or by painting around it we can just go in and carve our highlights out when we're done now that looks pretty good um, you might you know adjust and add a little more shadows here and there but if you want it to pop a little bit more you can use colored pencils and I just had them out here, here they are here are my colored pencils oh boy um, so what you want to do is find a color that's similar to your petal color and in, and uh, enhance the shadow Keep it dark right up next to it, and don't forget on the inside too. Now I want that light in the center that should be in the middle of my shadow, so I'm going to do that with a little white and yellow. Um, I don't know if you've ever noticed it before, but colored pencils, the regu these are regular colored pencils, not watercolor pencils. Colored pencils are quite um, opaque, so they can go over watercolor quite nicely. So on the inside of that, um, that drop, I'm adding some white. I'm actually going to go over my highlight with that white. That looks a little dark to me. I'm actually going to erase that a little bit. If it gets a little bright, you can go over it with an eraser to blend it, to soften it out a little bit. And there you have that. It looks a lot more realistic now. It seems to jump out of the page a little bit more. I like to add a little warmth to my color. So I'm going to go in and put a little bit of um, a little bit of that yellow in the dewdrop where it's caught the light. And you can even blend in with those um, with your other colors there. So, And I also like to put um, just another little streak of light down here to make it look really glossy. And there you have it. That's how you do it. Uh, that's how you do a dewdrop. And actually, you know, if you had a nice big dewdrop and it was on the middle of a of a big painting, you probably wouldn't even need or want to go in with a colored pencil. But when you're working in a small area, I do find the colored pencil is very helpful because it's kind of hard to get um, your brush around a tiny little dewdrop. So. If, you, if this is too bold and you don't care for it, then don't do it. Just stop when you like with the watercolor, um, with the watercolor. And then, but if you prefer this, if you like it, it can. If you overdo it, it can look a little cartoony and a little like over the top. But you know, you can see the difference between this and that. It just has that extra little pow. And I had to go in with my colored pencil on this because um, those drops are so small. I mean, like that is probably like half a centimeter wide. Um, it, it just wasn't looking um, as pronounced as I wanted it to with just the watercolor. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have a new um, 
a new painting tutorial coming coming up in my shop where we will be doing dewdrops. so I wanted to make sure that was out there in case anybody had any difficulty with it and uh, if you have any questions leave them below and I will uh, answer them as best as I can if you like this video please like it give me a thumbs up or too close can't you can't see my thumb my thumb is up um, <laughs> and subscribe so you don't miss any other videos I want to thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting